Um, welcome, everyone. I know it's um, it's meant to be noisy here. I think it's a marketplace. We all <laughs> we should feel as if this is um, out on out on the street. But we are very excited to have you here. Um, for those of you who are not aware, um, on Tuesday the new roadmap um, towards ending childhood tuberculosis was launched, and this session will really um, reflect on that and also ask your input in how we can maximize the impact of this. So our we're going to have short presentations by our panel members and then there'll be time for questions and discussion afterwards. Um, I'm going to <laughs> start off by um, asking uh, Kiara Goslett to give us a short um, perspective, patient perspective um, on living with TB and MDR TB. Kiara is from South Africa and um, is now 18 but had TB when she was 11. 19. Sorry, that's a big mistake to make. One of these days, you'll be very glad if people get it wrong. <laughs> <the other way. laughs> um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Kiara Goslett, and I'll be having a short presentation of my story. Otherwise, I would be like talking and crying and talking about my whole story. Um, I have no confidence. My MDR TB journey started in the year of 2016 when I was 11 years old. Um, I took my medication at two clinics, and after that I was admitted to Brooklyn Chess Hospital, a hospital in Cape Town. This is the, um, me standing at the front of the hospital, and this is the quantum that came to fetch me at the clinic. Um, so when I arrived at the hospital, I was booked into an isolation ward, which was ward B, so, um, this was the ward, that's the entrance of the ward, me standing at the bed that I was at, at in the room that I was in, and um, that is the staff that was still there from seven years ago, that's the park, and it was very colorful, very nice. Um, so after the isolation ward, a doctor came to me and she said, Kiara, you are going to Ward 3 now, this is the, the, the children's ward where you are not so infectious anymore, which means you can go home for weekends. And I was extremely happy, I was, I was jumping for joy because I, wasn't, I wouldn't like have to be alone. And I was like with other children that also was going through the exact same thing as me. Um, so this is Ward 3, that's me standing at the, uh, at the um, entrance of the ward. And this was the inside and it actually became an XDR ward now. But that was how it looked um, in seven years. Sorry, seven years ago. Um, I also finished my schooling at Brooklyn Chase Hospital. My granny would bring schoolwork from my primary school to the um, the school at the hospital. So this is me standing at the entrance of the school, and that's my teacher. And they still had my books, my notebooks from seven years ago like stored in the cabinet and like I was so surprised. And um, so this is the, the classroom I had looked and that's the outside. And I was also part of a research unit at the Brooklyn Chess Hospital. So this is me standing at my bed, one of the beds that I was at. That's the staff that was still there and yes. Um, key actions to accelerate process. These are just a few points that I feel resonate with my story and that needs more attention when it comes to helping children 
and adolescents that are dealing with TB and also those who are indirectly affected by TB. Priority groups having a higher risk of contracting TB, such as children and, and adolescents, should get more funding for targeted interventions. Create and support programs that can assist children and teens who are directly or indirectly impacted by TB as context menu. Invest in the engagement of community leaders and community-based organizations as key partners to increase the demand of high-quality TB services. Um, just also a special word of thanks and appreciation to the management and staff at the Brooklyn Chess Hospital because they helped me a lot with um, healing and just finishing my treatment as a well. whole. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sierra. For the next uh, 45 minutes, I want you to walk in her shoes. Imagine yourself young, vibrant, and you have to walk in her shoes for two years. But I'm just giving you 45 minutes to walk in them. <laughs> yeah. So next we're going to hear from um, Blessy. Blessy is going to take us through the, app the applicability of the new roadmap. Blessy is, is, of course, a very seasoned TB advocate from India, and uh, we are glad to have her here. Bless you, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for coming here on a rainy morning. And uh, we hope that not only will we just walk in Kiara's shoes for the next 45 minutes, but commit the rest of our lives to ending childhood TB. That's what I would like to ask everyone to do. So I would um, uh, like to take you through a few of my slides, just to say I have no conflict of interest. So I'm going to look at how the roadmap, uh, the applicability of this roadmap for TB-related advocacy in a TB high burden country. I come from India. I work globally with the Global Coalition of TB Advocates but we are based in India and we do a lot of work with the uh, Indian uh, program. Um, sorry. Enter. Okay. So this is the roadmap. This was launched just the other day, two days ago. It's a great document. It really highlights where we are, what the gaps are, and what we must do. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what it needs to be for us to be able to use that. So if we look at the progress and this is the latest, hot off the oven, like you say, the numbers. It's a great document, but the contents should really still make us feel that we have perhaps somewhere failed to do justice to our children because we are still lagging behind. Uh, the roadmap is available online, so I'm not going to go through it, but just to say that 600 children die every day from a curable, treatable disease that is tuberculosis. 600 children. It could be my child, your child, neighbor's child, relative's child, but children dying, which should not happen. So I want us to just look at that and see the gaps and try and stand in those gaps when we go out from here. If we look at the treatment coverage, there is still a gap of finding the little ones, the ones below five years. We have a huge gap in providing TB preventive therapy, something that can actually safeguard our children. We are only able to provide so little 
and that should not be acceptable. When we look at the treatment outcomes of the people that, of the children that we are finding, we're doing okay with drug sensitive TB, but drug resistant TB, MDR and RRTB, we're at 80%. But for me as a mother, it is not acceptable. You know, we need to be there at 100%. I know epidemiologists, scientists, researchers will give me a hundred reasons why we can't get there. But as parents, as neighbors, as adults in this world, I think we owe it to our children to try and get there. Finding children, like I said, is still a problem. And this 80% is only 80% of the children we are finding. We are still not finding 86% of the children. So we are not doing well, people. If we have any commitment to children, if we love children, if we have heard Kiara's story, and even if you're irritated with children, because they can be irritating when they're little babies, we owe it to them. They are our today, they are our tomorrow. So we cannot let this happen. So the roadmap, I just want to highlight a little bit about the UNHLM 2023 targets. They're very good, very ambitious. We would have liked it to be much more, but what we have is good. And I think what we can do is a lot better. If we look at the children, the targets are Quite good, I think, if we all join together. If we look at the last five years from 2018 high-level meeting, we didn't do too well. We have 71% treated and 19% of children with DRTB treated, children like Kiara. We only reached 19 children out of every 100. What is holding us back? We need to be answerable to our children. And if we look at uh, TB treatment, again, the target was 200 and um, um, six, this is 2018 to 2023. We could still do a lot better. Now, the roadmap, you know, if you read it, it's very interesting. There were an estimated 1.25 million children and young adolescents who fell ill with TB, and that is 12% of the total burden of all TB. But 51% were not diagnosed. Why? We have the tools. We fought for the tools. We have the tools. Why aren't we diagnosing children, and why aren't they being reported to the national TB programs? because ultimately the action is at the country level. Globally, we can have all kinds of documents, but the action needs to be at the country level where you and I are. And when we look at our little ones, children below five years, it is even worse. You know, children, human children are the most vulnerable when they're babies. If you look at animals, they quickly are able to jump up and run. But children need a lot of support. Children need a voice. And that is something that we have to give. The present UNHLM targets are great. I'm not going to go through them. It talks about 90% of people who develop TB getting quality assured diagnosis and treatment and supporting them to complete treatment, which means Nutrition, social protection, whatever, you know, is needed to make them complete that. And this includes 4.5 million children. And household contacts to be provided, um, uh, children who are at high risk to be provided with TB preventive therapy, 90% should get that. And th these are great targets for us to keep in mind as we go ahead. Now, the roadmap also has 10 action points for us to look at. But for these action points to become actions, they need to be translated at the ground level. 
we can't go from here and say, oh, we have a great guideline, we have a great roadmap, and it's going to change the world. It's going to save lives of children like Kiara. It's not going to happen. It needs you and me to actually act based on that because these action points are great. They are relevant. They resonate with people who are working in TP and people who are not working in TP. Because these, these are really actionable. They're not up there. They're really practical action points. You know, they talk about increased funding. We all talk about it. National leadership, social protection, advocacy, building and sustaining local capacity, implementing and scaling up solutions and interventions that have been successful, and integrated children-centered, family-centered, community-centered strategies, so closer to the people, the better it's going to be, improving data collection, supporting R&D and innovation. Great points, not rocket science. We all do it on a daily basis. At least we talk about it on a daily basis. So let's start doing it. So now this also presents great opportunities for us at the country level. And for it to be really applicable in high burden and also in not so high burden countries. It has to be political because it is the political commitment that is needed. And I do believe that there is enough in the roadmap for us to take it and advocate with our political leaders. It needs to mobilize resources. And I do believe that using this, we can go and ask for increased funding. And it also needs to be an advocacy tool. And already, I have used this since the day it was launched to advocate for children. So it is a great advocacy tool. And the fact that it's really bright colored also helps. <laughs> it needs to be visual. When I was having a call with David before uh, the roadmap was launched, we were talking about it and we said, I was telling him, him, I said, I'm sorry, many of the things that come out of Geneva and WHO are hard to understand. You know, it's all about numbers and data and graphs and it's nothing about children, it's nothing about people. But I'm really glad to say that this is amazing. You know, look at it, please go and look at it. It's like a children's story, but I love it. So, and it's also usable. You can take it and actually, and I'm, I keep it with me all the time. You know, it's a bit crumpled, but I take it and I talk about it and I read about it. Because it's not numbers only, it's voices. It's voices of children like Kiara. I know she's a child now, but uh, uh, you know, it is about, so we need to make it about people for it to be usable and applicable in our countries. And lastly, we continue as advocates to ask for price reduction. All of us have added this as our last uh, slide. So wishing you the very best to NTB, not just in everybody, but very specifically in children. So we have our young leaders today that will go on to be greater leaders tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Blessy. Um, so, so you've heard from a patient, you've heard from a passionate mother and grandmother um, about yet. what we need to do differently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking for our children with a lot of passion, and I, I, I think um, Blessy also emphasized the fact that we, um, we need to get this down to country level. We need ownership at the country level. So um, Pires Neta, who's from Mozambique, will talk next and will really reflect on community engagement in their setting. And I'm also going to ask, while you get <laughs> set up, um, Pires, uh, just we have got um, the website for the roadmap, but whether um, the two-page flyer, is that available online as well? Is it something people can access? All right. We'll, we'll make sure that you get the particulars afterwards for those of you who want the 
the two-page flyer. And just to say, if you have any questions, please just post those via Slido. Um, just if you scan um, the picture over there. And you can also, if we have time, we can, we can have a roving mic if that's necessary. Pires, over to you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pires from Mozambique. Uh, also, I'm going to present our experience on the intervention of TB in children and young adolescents. So, as example, uh, experience of, of my colleague, Blessing from India, I want to share also what we are doing in Mozambique about the children and young adolescents about TB. So, uh, this is the background of National Tuberculosis Program in Mozambique, uh, 2022. Uh, in terms of uh, rate of uh, incidence of TB, we had uh, 361 per 100,000 uh, 100, uh, inhabitants in Mozambique with high burden TB in this country, in, uh, TB, TB, HIV, and multi uh, resistant uh, TB uh, drug. Uh, in terms of all forms of diagnosis of tuberculosis, uh, we had uh, one, uh, 110,674. Uh, for uh, TB case in Mozambique, where 12% were TB in children uh, below 15 years old. Uh, out of this number, uh, almost 35% were corresponding to the contribution of uh, the community. So many challenges what we're facing in Mozambique in terms of tuberculosis. Uh, uh, first, we have the contact tracing. It means that all contacts are not screened in Mozambique. Second, we have loss of follow-up before and during the treatment. And third, we have uh, long distance to health facilities. This is our main challenge what we are facing there. Um, so, uh, one impact is a community-led monitoring, so reveal the gaps uh, in contact screening among the children and the young adolescents in Mozambique. Uh, according to our report, uh, CLM, Data informing you well that uh, TB uh, barriers uh, for children and young adolescents. In second wave, uh, data of CLM was one of uh, uh, its communicating the, 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 the implementer that uh, it gives response for us to go uh, be, be behind of this information. So we had action plan uh, made or agreed between HBP the organization and the national tuberculosis program at the province and district level where we have to go door to door visit to scream uh, 504 uh, household of TB contacts. Also this action uh, took place in Zambezia province where I am working. So in two districts, Milanje and Murumbala district. So the catchment area of 10 health uh, facilities. So it took place for three months uh, on 2022, August, September, and October. So these are basic data before the action. We had uh, 2,486 people with TB were oriented and engaged with CLM. We have uh, 504, almost 20% reported barrier to TB service for children and adolescents. So out of this number, almost 88%, reported that their household contact under 15 years old had not been screened. Also, we had 11%, uh, 56, uh, reported that preventive therapy was not available of, for LC facilities. Also, we had uh, four people reported that they didn't not want their children to take preventive therapy. So, we had two strategies for this action. One, we have included the list of TB uh, indicators for children and uh, adolescents in the one impact uh, CLM dashboard. And two, uh, we had a uh, household visit for this number of uh, 504 households to stream all contacts. So in terms of result of, of this joint action, we had 1,157 People in this uh, 504 household were excluded uh, 397 children plus 760 adults. So, 
we had uh, 320 of uh, 397 uh, children contact were identified as eligible to start TPT after evaluation by TBNES and they started on TPT. So also we had uh, 124 people were diagnosed with TB, uh, 77 were children and 47 were adults. And other initiated uh, uh, treatment. This is a picture of this uh, action what we have done there in the community. So in terms of conclusion, uh, first, if people affected by TB are informed and empowered, they can become uh, their uh, key actors and decision makers in TB response. Two, uh, the one impact CLM approach can be scaled up easily and can be integrated into existing systems of TB uh, uh, intervention. For example, can use it for household contact investigation. This was one example what we have done in Mozambique. Also, it is an efficient platform to, of community uh, and national tuberculosis exchange. Third, uh, the One Impact Digital uh, Platform is an efficient alert system uh, for rapid community and health response, providing unique and uh, real time insights into service gaps and opportunities to find the missing cases, also missing children after affected by TB in Mozambique. So these are uh, tools of uh, One Impact CLM. Uh, on my, my right side, that one is a, is a mobile, where we can, uh, through this One Impact, we can have access of information, can get access of information, can get access of the nearest uh, LC facility. Also, uh, the people affected by tuberculosis can get connected themselves and discuss also to share the experience also, there's a part where they, where they can uh, report their barriers, also challenge with what, what they're facing during the treatment. So on this uh, left side of my side, this is a dashboard where the reports can be generated, also can share with the National Tuberculosis Program and other stakeholders. Thank you very much. Yeah, bless you said, we are the advocates for children, right? Because children are in school, so they cannot be here with us to do advocacy for themselves. Therefore, we have to be their voices. However, I have picked a few points from uh, that presentation. One, that 88% of homes with children, contact tracing was not conducted. That means, most likely, we missed some children who should have been put on treatment. Another shocking one is that a good proportion of parents did not want their children to be, be put on TPT. Just think about that. Yet we are supposed to be their advocates, but with the barriers to access for services. Ponder about that. And as we continue, remember to write down your comments, inputs, questions. We want to strengthen uh, advocacy for implementation of this roadmap from the input. Now, next, we have to think about accountability. And of course, accountability starts with us who are in this room. But you're going to hear from uh, Kenya, experience of uh, strengthening accountability for children and adolescents. It's going to be presented by Jacqueline Waboy. Jacqueline Waboy is from Kenya. She's my country mate. <laughs> so I have to give more emphasis to her introduction. And in my language, you say karibu. Sante. Okay, thanks. As I've been introduced, my name is Jackie Wabui from the beautiful country of Kenya. I have no a uh, conflict of interest to report. And let me just say, I'm actually doing this presentation on behalf of a young girl who was denied access to this conference because of uh, paperwork, which we all know. So, Gloria, this is for you. Mm -mm.
So my presentation is strengthening accountability and addressing tuberculosis for children and adolescents in Kenya. I work for an organization known as Africa Treatment Access Partnership, and Africa is um, part of the Smart for TB Cub and uh, heads uh, Africa uh, regionally. So just to give a snapshot, the TB burden in Kenya, in Kenya is, is very heavy on children and adolescents. So we had uh, 10,305 childhood TB cases, which is between the ages of zero, below 14 years. And they were notified to the program representing at least 11.4% of all notified cases against the national target of 10% to 15%, which as you can see is quite high. And overall cases for detection, again, like in most countries, is, remains very low with only 45% treatment coverage with childhood TB contributing only 9.6% of all um, ESTB in 2021 and 4% of drug resistant TB between 2019 and 2021. So these are some of the challenges. Increased mortality rates due to delayed access to TB diagnosis uh, services. Most times D TB is misdiagnosed with other illnesses, especially pneumonia. Long-term health consequences due to delayed diagnosis. Um, and of course, suboptimal treatment, which can lead to irreversible damage and disabilities, including stunted growth. We have a lot of mental health challenges, psychological and emotional trauma for children and their families. And again, the impact for tuberculosis is not only limited to physical health. Delays, delays can disrupt a child's education, hindering their future prospects. So these are the challenges in addressing now some of these um, challenges, you know, like in addressing tuberculosis in children and adolescents. And I'm going to go around in a circle and end up in the gray part, which is like doom and gloom. Eh? So limited access to healthcare services. Again, it happens in most places. Lack of access to quality TB diagnosis and treatment services. If you cannot diagnose this, you cannot treat it, right? Limited diagnostic tools and tailored treatments leading to challenges in identification of TB cases. Things like x-ray. How do you x-ray a screaming baby? Stigma and misconceptions leading to delayed diagnosis and treatment. TB is highly stigmatized. Underreporting and misdiagnosis of TB cases, like I mentioned, leading to delayed treatment. Again, lack of awareness due to stigma again, which leads to more stigma among pa parents, the caregivers, and even the healthcare providers about TB in children and adolescents. I think it was made to be like only a grown-up disease, and a lot of people thinking, you know, like, how would my child get TB? And that ignorance. So now I'm back to the, round the circle and to the gray, dull color. It makes, <laughs> it makes the slides look not bright anymore. So inadequate funding for TB allocated to its prevention, its diagnosis, and treatment. Without funding, we can't do much, can we? So now in terms of accountability for TB in Kenya, these are some of the points. Development of national TB policies, formulating and implementing effective policies and strategies, strengthening data collection and reporting systems, Creating some of these systems, including Tibu and Tibu Light, some of those dash dashboards. Tibu in Swahili means treat. Enhancing collaboration, which is now fostering partnerships between key stakeholders, including communities. If you work alone, you won't go far, right? Empowering school going children to create TB awareness amongst themselves, and also the screening through TB festivals. Resource mobilization for TB services through engagement of parliamentary health committees and CSOs. Um, my country mate, Evelyn, is one of the people who's always in the face of parliamentarians in Kenya. Community-led monitoring, something very important, using various tools 
like I monitor ATM and one impact among others. And of course, if it is not documented, it hasn't happened. And documentation of these human interest stories and success stories to inform programming and implementation. So some of the outcomes of these uh, accountabilities. So parliamentary health counties have been able to advocate for TB issues at the national and global level, supporting resolution of challenges experienced in TB programming, and resource mobilization for TB, for example, inclusion to the supplementary budget to address tokels, like it happened in 2020. Community-led monitoring, reporting of about 900 issues on TB drugs-related issues, 236 affected children and 135 showed key issues with nutrition supplements for children from April 22 to September 2023. And evidence-based advocacy through community-led monitoring data. And then of course, uh, one most important thing is awareness creation through students. Through school-going children, about 200,000 were screened and 649 of those were diagnosed and 647 found to have tuberculosis in that period. And students in all the 47 count counties that we have in Kenya participated in the national music festivals and presented TB-related items to create awareness. So the music festival is where most of the students meet like countrywide. And I remember as a young student, if you hadn't gone to the music festival, you hadn't gone anywhere. So that is one of the places that, you know, these uh, festivals are used to create this uh, TB awareness. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, um, Jackie. I'm going to ask for Maxime Lunga as our last speaker to move up to the podium. Um, so you are getting different um, community perspectives and Maxime will reflect on the DRC. And um, I think like Jackie demonstrated um, there's always a lot of news, uh, noise in the TB world. If we want the children to be visible, we need to stand up and so talk loud for them. <laughs> so thanks for pushing through, Jackie. Um, Maxime, over to you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for the microphone. Um, I'm Maxime Lunga. I come from DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. It is a big country, like a subcontinent. But as you know, a uh, big country, uh, big TB challenge also for the country. I'm here to share with you our experience uh, on strengthening community engagement to reach TB targets for children and adolescents. Uh, but uh, ERC uh, is, if not the first, but the second TB uh, uh, burden country in Africa. And uh, in terms of uh, pediatric TB stat stat status in DRC and CAP TB project that we, we have uh, in the country, in 2021, the proportion of children notified was 10%. percent proportion uh, has remained uh, stationary at 11% uh, for uh, more than five years. And the gap for pediatric TB detection uh, represents 50% uh, of the expected pediatric target. And 48% uh, 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 children under five years of age who were contact of eligible TB patient did not benefit from preventive TB treatment. But my, uh, I work from, uh, I work from uh, uh, a former TB uh, uh, patient organization named Club des Amis d'Amiens, CAD. We benefited the support from uh, Elizabeth Grazer uh, through the TB, uh, CAP TB project uh, uh, in from uh, 2018 to 2000, uh, 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 2021 to implement the CAP TB project community intervention in Kinshasa in 21. Uh, uh, health facility with uh, uh, 61 uh, community health workers involved in the project. And the goal of this project uh, was to contribute to the reduction of morbidity and mortality due to uh, pediatric TB and the outcome of critical access barrier removed to facilitate scale up of uh, pediatric TB. 
And then we had uh, uh, three, three uh, activity package. And for us, the community workers, uh, we uh, focused on the community involvement. Uh, we have three activities, capacity building of local CSO and NGOs, advocacy uh, to mobilize the resource of updates, uh, policies, uh, and so on. Also, household contact investigation. And uh, all the packets of activity uh, was done by the uh, clinic uh, healthcare. And uh, this package, we have also uh, three sub-activity uh, uh, package. The first one is integrated of TB screening into pediatric entry points in the health center. And our, our community member grow to the, the other services uh, in the health center. Uh, to care of the uh, oriented uh, sanitary and education in the nutrition, nutritional service. Uh, I, don't, I don't know uh, CEPEN in, 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 in English, but uh, uh, is a consultation uh, prenatal uh, of the maternity and also uh, at the uh, maternal care uh, structures. And they did the uh, uh, sanitary and education, TB sanitary and education to refer the presumed to health facility for diagnosis and treatment. And you, you, you see that the, the, we focus our attention in the children and adolescents. And for the second uh, sub package, house, uh, household systematic contact investigation and recurrent co contact uh, tracing uh, visit to household visit uh, TB index cases and refer to be present, uh, presented to the health facility for diagnosis and treatment, refer to contact children under five years, uh, not present of TB for uh, uh, TB preventive treatment, and also uh, answer the transport of samples, and also uh, follow up patient uh, uh, support to TB patient uh, in the treatment journey. And the last um, sub packet is, uh, is for the advocacy among responsible of private uh, health institution in Kinshasa, because uh, in Kinshasa, uh, the, the, the private sector are, uh, uh, has more than, uh, uh, I think that uh, six, uh, 45% of the TB health center in Kinshasa, that is very, very important to do with him, with them. And we developed the key advocacy uh, material and messages and also the multi-stakeholder consultation with, with national TB program, civil society organization, and the head of private religion convention structure, uh, such as Catholic, uh, Protestant, and uh, Salvation Army. And uh, the key results uh, was uh, spectacular, you can see uh, there. Uh, we start to collect data uh, at uh, uh, 2019, but you can see uh, uh, the evolution. In 2020, uh, we, we had the impact of COVID-19, uh, COVID you say, yeah. And uh, with our uh, intervention, we, in 2019, we we put uh, 2,342 uh, 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 children uh, under five years to the uh, TPT. It was 44% uh, uh, 40, uh, or, uh, oriented by the community. And then we, we decre the data decreased, uh, was decreased uh, at uh, 2020, but uh, not enough because we are doing more and we advocate uh, to the uh, sanitary uh, health authority to to to, uh, to 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 delete the 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 the, the measure that they uh, take for the, uh, the the COVID-19, and we continue to the intervention, and you can see uh, the baseline before uh, the intervention uh, at uh, 2018. Uh, only uh, uh, 165. Uh, uh, children uh, was put in uh, TB, uh, TPT, uh, TB preventive treatment. But with our uh, intervention, in uh, the end of the, 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 uh, the, the intervention, uh, we have 4,195 children were put in, uh, in TPT. Uh, it, uh, it means that uh, we... Uh, we bring the contribution uh, or the, 
we, we, uh, we, we increase the, 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 the rates of the, 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 the TPT uh, targets uh, uh, from the beginning uh, to the end uh, into 2,442%. Uh, That's a very, uh, uh, yes. Maxi, very just special. one minute, we have to Thank wrap up. Thank you. And then, uh, in generally, we contribute enough uh, in the, um, in the, 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 the data uh, on the country. And then, uh, in the advocacy uh, intervention, we, we uh, did the, the mini dialogue with national team program, and we have the, the treatment card because it's not uh, important if you can only put in uh, TPT, but uh, not to be sure that they can achieve the treatment. Uh, the, the completion of treatment is very important that uh, the, the children begin the treatment and uh, achieve the treatment also. And also uh, we did the advocacy to uh, deletion of uh, the, 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 the consultation fees uh, for uh, those children uh, uh, referred by community uh, uh, actors to, to, to accede uh, easily to the TPT. And also uh, we have the engagement of uh, all uh, 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 responsible of uh, private religious uh, uh, convention structure to uh, to reduce the, the barriers to access to TB pediatric uh, services. And then uh, major learning from community engagement on TB children and adults was that the integration of screening and contact investigation contributes effectively to the identification of TB pediatric presumed and also to increase the t uh, t uh, children and adolescent uh, target. Building community capacity on pediatric TB, including sample collection uh, uh, procedures, contribute to increase the TB notification in children and adolescents. Contact investigation contributed to approximately 20% uh, of new uh, pediatric TB patients in the period uh, of the intervention. Community engagement results in the removal of consultation fees to, for children under five years, all the referral for TPT. I will say here that uh, tuberculosis is killing in silence and is not acceptable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Magazine, and uh, success, uh, congratulations for the ach achievements that you've made. If because of time, we may not be able to respond to all the questions. There are quite a number of questions that, are, that have come in. want to really say thank you for all of you for coming. But if you forget anything else in this conference, remember one thing. You are going to be held responsible for the lives of children who may lose their lives to TB when we have the roadmap that would help us to reduce TB-related deaths. So let's be the children's advocates. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference.